Well, welcome everyone to the Purdue Forestry Natural Resources last lecture event. For those who I haven't had the honor of meeting yet, my name is Casey Doden and I'm the Alumni Relations Scholarship and Awards Coordinator for the department. And today we're here to celebrate our students and their journeys to this point, but especially our graduates and recent graduates who are celebrating, who are celebrating their university career here at Purdue. So for so many of you, it's really been a privilege to get to know you uh, as soon to be alumni and watch you grow throughout your time here at Purdue. Uh, for those who don't know, I actually started here about three and a half years ago. So for a lot of you seniors, I, I entered the department only a few months after you. And it really has been a pleasure to get to know so many of you and, you know, not just grow myself, not just with my own personal growth within the department, but to watch you come from, you know, first semester freshman all the way through to where you are now as budding young professionals who, you know, we're already so proud of, but we know we're, are going to do so many wonderful things. So that's really been great. And I, I feel like I'm, I'm, in some ways I get to be part of your class at having to see everything you guys have gone through together. So this is our inaugural last lecture event here in FNR, and it's something that's celebrated by colleges and universities across the country and also Canada, and is originally inspired by, some, by an event of the same name uh, put on by Randy Pausch of Carnegie Mellon University. So if you have the opportunity to ever watch the original one, it's very good, very touching, uh, and I highly recommend it if you have the opportunity. So, even though it's this is called the last lecture, I hope that this isn't the last opportunity for learning that a lot of you have in in your lives. Uh, you know, despite the fact that a lot of you are graduating or recently graduated, you know, learning and growth doesn't end here. It, we love our academics at Purdue, but the but in my opinion, the experiences, skills, and relationships they've built outside the classroom are really where it's at. It, the, and if you keep on building those skills and relationships throughout your life, they're, they're going to serve you well. They're going to carry you well beyond what you've already learned. At some point, your, your professional world is, go, is going to go beyond everything you've learned. And those are the things that, that are going to keep on carrying you in life and keep on giving you that strong basis to, to work throughout your, your, your career, but also everything else. The fact that you're going to be able to, you know, know how to deal with the hard, hard times and, or as Purdue loves to talk about, show that grit in, in your personal lives as well, you know, Life has its turns. We're up, most everyone's in a different place than they thought they'd be. And all those lessons that you learn outside the classroom are, are huge in, in the world after this as well. So for today, we have the honor of having Lenny Farley here to share his words of wisdom with everyone. For those who haven't got a chance to know Lenny, he's an FNR Forestry Extension Specialist in Hardwoods and is also a Purdue alumnus himself. And for those who do know Lenny, I don't have to tell you that he's a favorite amongst our students and is both a great person and a source of wisdom. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Lenny. So please join me in welcoming Lenny Farley. AC, uh, thank you so much. I was uh, really pleased, surprised, and very honored uh, to be asked to do this inaugural uh, last lecture honoring you, the graduating forestry and natural resources students. So I'm truly honored to speak with you tonight, and I'm grateful you're all here. So when I heard that I would be presenting a lecture on Zoom at night with no quiz or grade associated with it, I couldn't imagine why anybody would want to attend. Uh, so I'm relieved to see you all came. It's nice to have you here, uh, that we actually have a crowd uh, to make this worthwhile and for, for you to be here to be honored this evening. Uh, also to address some confusion, some folks were wondering if this is my last lecture. Uh, so far as I know, that is not the case. But if my email account is turned off tomorrow, my office key doesn't work, I guess that means I misinterpreted the program title. Uh, hopefully that's not what's gonna happen tomorrow morning. So first of all, congratulations. You should be proud of your significant accomplishment. Uh, completing a degree from Purdue University, assuming of course that you don't botch your finals, which I'm sure you won't. I, I anticipate you are preparing already to make sure you take care of those efficiently. Uh, you're joining a family of FNR alumni stretching back over 100 years. There are a lot of names and contributions to natural resources on that list, and you're getting added to it very shortly. Many of your predecessors have set an example of what can be accomplished when you apply your education to begin and build a career of contribution to the environment and your community. I'm personally very proud of you and your accomplishments. 
Many of you were summer practicum students in 2019, uh, the year of the deep and cold water. Rain and temperatures in the mid 30s and then sleep the next day made for some rough field time, but you persevered and completed the find the flag exercise with honor. And that really made me proud to see how you persevered in that situation. I admit that I'm still a little surprised you didn't gang up on me and toss me in the bog for what I ran you through that week. And I'm grateful for that kind of grace. Uh, you've also persevered and succeeded in the midst of a transformation to most aspects of life precip precipitated by this global pandemic. You've learned to adapt, and that's a powerful ability that may serve you really well in the future. While adversity is uncomfortable and disagreeable at times, once overcome, it serves as a reminder that I did that difficult thing. I can take on the next challenge. The result is personal and professional growth. I've been a professional forester since 1985. So I suspect some of you are expecting me to provide some useful advice to carry you through your career. This is one of my best tidbits of wisdom. If you're planning to do field work, I have a lesson learned from personal experience. If you've been working in an area full of cockle burrs and stick tights all day, do not mix your field clothes and underwear in the same laundry load. It makes for a really uncomfortable next few days. Now you know, so you won't repeat my mistake. Now that lighthearted advice leads me to a more serious point to ponder. As I observe and think on it, I believe many of the mistakes we've made in natural resources management have been the result of well-intended but ill-considered shortcuts that didn't take us where we hoped to go. There's some historic examples. We introduced some non-native plant species with the intention of improving habitat for wildlife. That's a noble goal, but with disastrous results, we're now spending enormous resources to correct. We suppressed wildfires at a landscape level to advance timber productivity and quality goals, but now we were stuck, but we were struggling to return a normal fire regime to the landscape and we're recognizing how critical it is to ecosystem structure and function. And lives and landscapes are at risk in the meantime. We attempted to reduce or eradicate predators to restore game species and improve hunting opportunities, but reaped unintended consequences that in many cases reduced the resiliency and productivity of those ecosystems for all species. Each of those actions were taken with good intention. But humans were in a hurry to get the desired results, just like I was in a hurry to get my laundry done, and it didn't work out really well. We're attempting to manage incredibly complex systems with conditions that vary over time and space. We would do well to walk into the planning and implementation of, of management with an abundance of due diligence, a healthy dose of humility, and a recognition that shortcuts are often recipes for delays or disasters, particularly on the first trip. It generally takes a few root explorations to discover the best way to get from one point to the other. I would like to speak with you now about some ideas I've been exploring about ethics, integrity, credibility, and legacy. I had the privilege a few years back to participate in a land ethic leaders program at the Aldo Leopold Foundation in Wisconsin. We practiced an approach to developing a land ethic called the observe, participate, and reflect method. Leopold used this with students, family, and colleagues himself. Participants explore their land ethic by observing the outdoors, participating in an environmental service project, discussing important conservation issues, and reflecting both on their learning and the training and what they feel called to do next. I think this model offers a good framework for development as a natural resource professional. We observe, measure, and analyze the structure and functions of systems to develop a working understanding of them. This may take some patience. I recall as an undergrad here at Purdue, Listening to Derwood Allen speak about the Isle Royale wolf study, he related how important it had been to continue observations of wolf and moose over several decades 
as the dynamics of the system were not consistent through time. Without an extended study period, many of the behaviors would have never been observed and conclusions would have been drawn that would not stand up over time. Once again, avoid the shortcuts. Be a dedicated observer of the environment. Participation in natural resources study and management is an important part of the process of gaining knowledge and experience. Leopold purchased a worn out farm and set about to restore it to a healthy state. An important product that grew from that participation in management by Leopold was the book, A Sand County Almanac, and the idea of a land ethic. Much as Leopold did, I was encouraged by a mentor to buy some land to manage. I've done that, and I recommend the same to you. If that's not possible, or while you save some money to do so, work with a friend a family or community member to help them manage their land. I've found it to be a transformative and enlightening experience that personalizes natural resources and helps you build a personal land ethic. Participating in activities where you have a personal commitment and interest can help develop a knowledge and respect for the connection between people and the land. Actively participate in your environment. Reflection on our approaches to and results of management and how we serve the land and the people who depend upon it are an important part of learning, adapting, and improving our practices and relationships with the environment. Taking the time to examine, evaluate, critique, and revise our ideas, plans, and practices is a critical part of our professional stewardship responsibilities. We must also remember that reflection may be most effective when it moves from a personal activity to a community conversation. Natural resources and the environment are in many ways truly community property. Reflecting on your relationship to the environment and the community that it depends on. Engage with others to expand that reflection activity into a collective conversation. I mentioned stewardship responsibilities earlier. A steward is a person assigned to care for something. We have an awesome responsibility as natural resource professionals. For that reason, I think it's a very important for each of us to work on the development and definition of our ethics. These are our core principles, our morals of professional practice, our values acted out in professional service. They can grow out of, out of experiences, faith, instruction, beliefs, values, and examples from those we trust and respect. They serve as a foundation for our decisions and actions. And be intentional about them because you'll want to have some in place before the really hard choices land in front of you. In order to do the right thing in the moment, we need to be thinking about what that right thing is before the moment finds us. And ethics themselves are hollow if they're not consistently acted upon. That sort of consistency requires the development of integrity. Integrity is a consistent and uncompromising commitment to truthfulness and honesty in your person and your professional practice. And this is tough. We are often tempted into compromises, half-hearted commitments, taking the easier road, avoiding hard or painful choices, hiding weaknesses or mistakes, or resisting necessary change. Those are human issues. The question for, or for us oftentimes is, will I walk through the bog to get the job done? And so fill in your own dirty, disagreeable task here. And those questions are ones we face every day. Deciding to do the right thing, even when it is hard, painful, costly, is a step towards integrity. Being honest, transparent, selfless, and generous in our personal and professional life is a step toward integrity. This does not mean that you cannot or will not make mistakes. It means that you will admit to them, own their consequences, make apologies and amends when appropriate, and work hard not to repeat them. Those are steps toward integrity. 
when we combine ethics with integrity, we start on a journey toward credibility. And credibility is the, the quality of being trusted or believed in. And I think credibility is one of the most important characteristics for any natural resource manager, and we should aspire to it. When we have credibility, our recommendations and actions can have meaningful impact. What we must recognize is credibility is built over time with colleagues, clients, stakeholders, and communities through the consistent exercise of ethics and integrity. We build trust by being faithful, committed stewards of what has been entrusted to us. We build confidence in our work through honesty, commitment, and excellence. We can attain credibility when we've built a solid history of reliability in word and action. This is a lot like the Isle Royale Wolf, Wolf study. If you give up on it halfway through, you don't get to see the real story. It takes some time to see the big picture here. If you are consistently striving to do your best work and acting with integrity, even your mistakes will be easier to manage. Careless mistakes can damage credibility, but deceit, denial, and misdirection will destroy credibility altogether. Admit and correct mistakes. That's how credibility is rebuilt and retained. Be a relentless observer, learner, and analyzer, and work hard to apply your skills to important issues, and credibility will follow. The last idea I want to talk with you about is legacy. A legacy in this context is something that's been transferred, or perhaps a better word, is bequeathed to future generations. Whether we know it or not, we're all working on our legacy. A personal legacy is the inheritance that is passed forward to future generations by you. We might initially think about money or property being passed to heirs in a will. Uh, realizing most of us natural resource types are not getting rich in this line of work, I'm thinking more about a legacy of contributions and accomplishments. I'm thinking about a body of research that advances our understanding and appreciation of the environment and our relationship to it. I'm thinking about a career that leaves behind natural areas restored, sustained, and vibrant. I'm thinking about a manager of resources who produces multiple environmental and societal benefits in, in a sustainable way. I'm thinking about an educator or interpreter that opens windows for audiences of all types to see the beauty and wonder in the natural world. I'm thinking about a business owner who unselfishly mentors young professionals and invests in their development and advancement. I'm imagining the significant and long lasting contributions of knowledge and action that each of you are on the verge of creating. It's an encouraging image to me. It is hope. So bring that vision to reality. Start working on that legacy. In most cases, it will take decades, but good things are worth waiting for. You are a member of the forestry and natural resources family. And family should keep in touch. Let us know how your journey's going. I'm looking forward to hearing the first chapters in your legacy story myself. I'm gonna close now with some lines from one of my favorite authors. And this is the walking song from J.R.R. Tolkien. The road goes ever on and on, down from the door where it began. Now far ahead the road is gone and I must follow, if I can, pursuing it with eager feet until it joins some larger way where many paths and errands meet and whither then I cannot say. It is my honor and pleasure to wish you deep satisfaction and best success in all you do. Remember that not all those who wander are lost. And I, I think I saw a, a request here. I'm sorry. Could we get an owl call to send those singers off? Okay, absolutely. Uh, so this is the barred owl. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. 
I hope that satisfied the request. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to meet with you. And I do wish you all the very best in your careers. And I look forward to hearing from you.